Alex Cole here with Bobcat Cam. So the topic of this video is going to be on thread milling. Thread milling is something that we commonly get questions on and a lot of our customers have confusion with. So hopefully we can clear up some of those confusions in this video and help you guys get uh, cut in good parts. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the key fundamental things that you need to understand about the system is that we have a thread library that's used across uh, different operation types. So that would be tapping a hole or threading using the thread mill operation. So our thread library, if you right click on CAM defaults, you'll find the thread library option in the menu. And when you go into the thread library, you'll see that we have uh, tapping groups and then we have a thread list under each of these groups. So as you select the different groups, you can see the different thread list that exists underneath of them. But don't get confused by the name tapping group because this is also used for thread milling and not just tapping. So the thread that we're going to do on this particular part, as we can see in the background, I've got uh, what appears to be a bolt blank. And we're going to do a 1 inch 8 thread. So if I look at this thread in the library, and I open this guy up, and I modify this thread, we can see that we have a label for the thread, we have a major diameter, uh, a minor diameter, we have a pitch that's defined, we have the thread angle that's defined, and a taper angle. Now this one doesn't have a taper angle because we're doing a straight thread and not a, not a pipe thread or anything like that. Down here at the bottom, we have a whole size group, and this whole size group, we have a cutting and a rolling option. And what these values represent is the pre-drill size that would be used if we were tapping a hole. And the cutting is if we were using a cut tap, and the rolling is the pre-drill size for a roll tap. And that's because in our system, when you're going to do a tapping operation, you can automatically create the drilling operation of the appropriate tool size based on uh, the geometry that's picked. It will um, automatically define and find what, you know, what thread it is and, and so on based on um, what it's able to find from this library. Okay, so that's kind of a, a quick overview of these parameters. Um, now the system, the major and minor diameter that's defined for this thread is used uh, in several different areas of the software. In the uh, thread milling that we're going to cover, we're going to see how that's applied here in just a little bit. Um, so that's just a quick overview of that thread library. But now let's take a look at the operation itself. So I've already created some operations for actually machining the uh, features of this actual bolt itself, you know, cutting the uh, roughing and finishing the shank to size, cutting the, the hex head, uh, chamfering the end of it. So we're just going to come in and we'll add our um, threading operation. And for the geometry here, I'm going to go ahead and select the end. Uh, it's just the edge of that surface and say OK. And we can see that it picked up a one inch diameter, which is good, but the depth, we need to go ahead and adjust this depth. And right offhand, I don't know how deep this is, goes. I didn't measure it beforehand, but that's okay. We can use this pick bottom option and come out here and select the shoulder or the bottom of the head there and say okay. And that will give us a depth from where we selected our geometry to that location. In this case, it was an inch and a quarter. I don't want to go that deep, so I'm going to alter that value to 0.875. And because we're doing an external thread and we're not down in a blind hole or a through hole uh, that an, an internal thread would be, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this through hole option down at the bottom because it's not going to apply. When I say next, we'll see that the feature wizard actually populates the tree on the left-hand side uh, with some default information. So um, on our machining strategy, you can see that we have a mill thread operation. Um, but what I want to look at first here is the posting page. So in the, the thread mill output group, we have two options for line moves or arc moves. 
And this is going to be important for you guys that are on machines that don't support helical arcs. If your machine controller doesn't support helical arcs or you haven't worked with our posting department to make sure that your post is outputting them correctly, then you'll need to use the line moves option and it will actually output linear segments in the NC code to cut the, the thread mill. Um, if you're on a machine that supports helical arcs and the helical arc output is working properly in your post processor, then you can use the arc moves option and it will give you significantly less amount of code in that NC file. So let's go ahead and move on to the tool parameters and take a look at the tool. So on our tool page, it's important to understand how we want to cut this thread. Uh, there's typically two main different types of tools that you use for cutting a thread with a milling machine when you're doing a thread mill operation. There's a single point tool, which we see in the image here, but there's also a multi-tooth tool that can cut multiple threads at the same time. Now in our system, when you go into the tool crib, you'll see that we have two different options. You have a thread mill, which will allow you to define tools with multiple teeth, or we have the single point thread option. For this video, we're just going to focus on the single point thread option, and I'll probably end up making a video for the multi-tooth thread, um, especially when you get into NPTs or pipe, uh, you know, tapered threads and pipe taps. All right, so on the tool page, we have this thread type option. When we turn off system tool, it enables all the parameters so we can see everything and we can get to this thread type button. Now on the tool page, it's important to understand that here, these parameters are only defining the tool. So when you come to the thread type and you're selecting a thread, what it's going to use is the parameters from that thread table and it's going to define parameters for your tool to be able to cut that. Now, every tool that exists in the library for a thread mill tool also has, if I come in here and add a tool from the library, you'll notice that all of these tools actually have, if I expand this, they have a thread assigned to them as well. And again, that's where these parameters come from for these tools. But it's important to know that this thread height is actually pulling the value of what the physical thread height is going to be on the part. And your tool, if your tool has the exact same thread height, then the shank of your tool will be right up against your part. And in reality, that's just not true. Your tool is going to be made with clearance. So I'm going to leave this at default so that we can see that in just a little bit. I'll show that to you out on the screen. Um, and then we'll come back in and change that. But for now, know that this item number three, and in our graphic, we can see that's defining how far that tooth sticks out uh, to be able to cut this thread. So again, on this page, we're defining the parameters for our tool. If we go to the patterns page, we're actually defining the type of cut that we're going to do. So our thread type, um, in this case, we want outside. And the method, we can do top down or bottom up, um, you know, whichever method you want to machine. If we wanted to take multiple passes uh, to work that thread to its final size, we could use side roughing and we could define a number of passes with the amount that each of those passes should be. In this particular video, we're not going to get into that, but know that these options are there for you to use. The parameters page is where all of the important parameters for the thread that we're going to cut are going to be defined. So by default, we can see that these fields are all enabled and I can modify their values. So we have um, a thread diameter, we have the thread height, we have the pitch of the thread, the threads per revolution. And the threads per revolution is important based on the type of tool that we're using. Because we're using a single point thread mill tool, that means that this tool has to revolve around the part for every thread that we're going to cut. 
But if we were using a tool that had multiple teeth, that was capable of machining multiple threads in a single pass, then we would be able to set this value to say three or four or five, and that will change the tool path that gets generated to cut the length of thread that we need to cut. Okay, and down here at the bottom, we have the direction we're gonna do a right hand. But what's important here is these are all default values for our diameter and our thread height and so on. But I'm gonna enable the thread library option, and this is gonna allow me to go out and select a thread type. So once again, this is gonna reference that thread library. And when I come in here and I pick my one inch eight thread, which is what we're gonna use on here, we can see that our thread height is that same value we saw on the tool page of 0.0744. So let's take a quick moment to look at a graphic that I had pulled from an online resource um, so that we can understand what numbers we should be putting into these fields so that we can cut our thread. So let's flip over to that graphic and take a look at that real quick. So here, again, this is just a resource. I went and did a web search um, on you know, thread diameter charts, and there's tons of resources out there. I'm sure you already have a favorite one. If not, go find a favorite one, and you, know, you can always reference that. Um, this is just one that I, I searched before I started the video here. And it gives a nice depiction of the thread itself and the different values. Uh, that are represented for the male or female thread. Um, the ones that we're interested in in this particular example is the male thread. And we can see this D4 value. If we look at their reference chart, this is our major diameter. And I, from the chart that was below this graphic, I just grabbed the one inch eight thread information so we could focus on that. And we can see that the major diameter is one inch, and that's where our geometry is. That's also the major diameter that we've defined in the software. And that's right here at the top of this thread, the male part of the thread. So the other dimension that we need to know is how deep is this thread? What is the thread depth? And so that is gonna be this D1 value and that is the minor thread diameter male. So if we look at the chart, we have 0.8512. So these values are in diameter. So if we grab our calculator real quick and we do one inch minus 0.8512, which is the value that we get from our chart, which is the root diameter, and I see what that value is, I get 0.1488. But again, these are diameter values. And so if we look in the software, we will see, turn this back off, that when we click on the thread height field, this is per side. This is looking for a value per side. So we can't work in a diameter value. We need the radial value. So we have to divide this by two, and that gives us 0 0.0744. And we can see that that matches what we have in the software. So we have the proper depth defined for this thread based on this thread diameter for this to cut correctly. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll compute this toolpath and we'll take a look at what we have. So the result that we have here is we've got a path that's going around the part and if I back plot this just real quick and we step in a couple of steps, I want to zoom in here and look at the shank of our tool and we can see that as predicted the shank of our tool is right up against our part. And in the real world, that's not going to be the case because your tooling manufacturer is going to have some sort of clearance based on a tool that's made to cut this size thread will have an appropriate amount of clearance in there. So what we need to do is actually figure out based on our tooling manufacturer, what is that, that clearance? 
and from the tip of that cutting edge over to the shank of the tool we need to put in an accurate dimension so i'm just going to change that to 90 thousandths and we'll recompute that path and going back to back plot one more time and looking at this we can now see that there is clearance between the shank of our tool and the cutting edge so that is good so what does this output look like and how can we determine whether this output is going to cut the right dimension on our machine so let's just take a look real quick at the math that's involved um, so that we can validate uh, the the program that's being generated now remember I have these other operations that I created that machine the other features so in our program I'm going to scroll down here to the end where our actual uh, thread milling operation starts and we're going to look at the G code here so this first arc move in is actually our lead in arc so that's a much smaller arc we can see it has a radius value of a quarter of an inch and then the next line is the one that I'm actually interested in and all of the lines that follow down to our um, next to last because the next to last is going to be our lead out arc. So I just want to see and all of these have the same radial dimension based on the, the arc center that's being output for this program. So how can we validate this number is the correct number? Well, let's think about this a little bit. We are cutting a one inch diameter part and this arc it should be centered right on the center of this part. So if we get our calculator back out and we take that one inch diameter, but we're working in radius because we need the tool to be shifted over off to the side of the part. So half of one is our 0.5. So one inch divided by two equals 0.5. So we have that would bring the center of our tool from the center of the part over to the edge. So the center of our tool would be on that edge. Well, we need to go over again by half of the width of our tool. So our tool, if we look at the parameters for our tool, our tool itself, let's go ahead and open this back up and grab our calculator. So we're using a half inch diameter tool. So half of our tool diameter is another quarter inch. So I'll add a quarter inch to that, 0.25. Okay, so now we're at 0.75. Now that would put the very outside edge of our tool, right, the sharp point of our tool, right at the edge of our part. But we have our thread depth. We're actually going to be cutting into that boss. So we know by the way that we calculated our thread depth and that we verified it, that our thread depth is 0 0.0744. So let's subtract 0 0.0744, all right, and we get 0.6756. So looking at our NC code, we can see that the arc center definition the arc that this is going to be sweeping around is 0.6756. Now, this matches because we're only doing a single pass that's right at our final diameter. In reality, you're going to be doing multiple passes to work that, to rough the thread in, and to be able to get that thread to the appropriate size because you'll have tool deflection or if you're cutting really hard material that's definitely going to you know make a difference in the way that it cuts if you're cutting softer material you may be able to do a single pass and get it right to size but if you're working in the fit of that thread you're going to be doing multiple passes and the thing that you need to keep in mind is the final dimension, the final pass that you're making, you can calculate this way. But if you try to calculate off of one of those other passes, you need to take into account how much material has been left on that pass. So that gives you an idea of how you can double check the program and also the default parameters that are used for thread milling. And I hope that you find the information from this video beneficial, and I hope that it can help you make some good parts.
All right. That's all for now. Thanks.